Come on, thank God for this choir today. Come on, these young people. Amen. I'm going to ask them to come on down. Amen. So they won't have to uh, look at my back. They would come on out front. Amen. Come on, thank God for them as they come. Amen. Doing a wonderful job. Yeah. We do honor the Lord today. We thank God for Jesus, his shed blood on the cross, his blood that washes and cleanses us from all of our sins. We're so glad that he, that he Jesus, went to an old rugged cross, he hung blood and died, and that we might have the right to the tree of life. Didn't have to do it, but he did. Died on the cross, the Bible says. They put him in a ball tomb, but early Sunday morning he got up with all power in his hands. <clears throat> and because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know who holds my future, life is worth the living just because he lives. Got up from the grave, went back to his father, and one day he's coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle. We'll be caught up to meet him in the air, and so shall we forever be with him the Lord. Isn't that good news? That's, that's good news today. We thank God. <clears throat> we thank God for good news today. All right, we do thank God for all of these preachers who are assembled. God bless you to uh, all the officers and members of this church. To Mother Williams, God bless you. To Mother Bird in her absence. And to the First Lady of Greater Bethel, uh, Reverend Gloria Redden. <clears throat> If you're turning your Bible, and I've been there a little while now, and I would pray that you would just pray for me, uh, because every so often it's just that the Lord doesn't release you from something uh, so easily. So uh, here we are again in the Old Testament book of Ruth, and we want to use as our text that third verse, the third verse of that third chapter of uh, the book of Ruth. Uh, we thank the Lord for Dr. Brown and to Brother Footman, to Brother Schaffner, Sister Jones. God bless all of you. Amen. Ruth, the third chapter, and um, the third verse houses our text. Not going not gonna to be long. Uh, we're not going to be long this morning. Amen. Uh, uh, not, not long at all this morning. Uh, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come and God thank you for this another opportunity to lift up your word. We pray, God, that you are so bless your people. Encourage hearts today. Give us a rain of word, a life-changing word. God, we don't want to leave the same way that we came. So, God, we thank you for all that you're going to do. Let signs and wonders follow your word. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Now, Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh, Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Let the people of God say amen. Say amen again. Say amen one more time. <clears throat> amen. Read the third chapter in the third verse. Wash thyself therefore and anoint thee and put thy raiment upon thee and get thee down to the floor but make not thyself known unto the man until he shall have done eating and drinking. Again, we've been preaching from the theme, and we want to continue in that theme uh, because the Lord is saying to us, uh, prepare yourself for a blessing. Prepare yourself for a blessing. Turn and tell your neighbor, prepare yourself for a blessing. Come on, find somebody else. Tell them, prepare yourself for a blessing. Come on, find one more person. Tell them, prepare yourself for a blessing. A blessing. Amen. We, we've been looking at this third chapter of Ruth, and uh, we see where it begins with uh, the, uh, the phrase, it came to pass in the days. And we made the point a long time ago uh, that whenever you see that particular verse in the Bible, uh, that it came to pass in the days, it is found in the Bible uh, five times. That expression is used five times in the Bible. And whenever you see that phrase, uh, it denotes, number one, that there is going to be impending trouble. Uh, that trouble is on the way. And I just want to say to somebody today uh, that uh, trouble 
is no respecter of persons. It doesn't matter who you are, you're going to go through some trouble in your life. I, I really believed, I really thought, I really believed, I was convinced actually uh, that when I accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior, I really did believe that everything was going to be all right. I thought I was not going to have any trials or tribulations in my life. I really thought that life was going to be smooth sailing. Uh, but I find out now that in every life, some rain is going to fall. I don't care who you are. I don't care how long you've been saved. I don't care how much you love the Lord. I don't care how long you've been a member of the church. Uh, if you love God and if you are saved, how many know that there's going to be some some trouble in uh, your life. But the good news is that trouble doesn't last always. That no matter what you're going through, there is an end to your trouble. Uh, because the second thing that that verse uh, really talks about is the fact uh, that not only would there be trouble, but there's going to be deliverance. Uh, and how many glad that there's going to be deliverance? That no matter what you're going through, you, how many know that God has the power to deliver you out of all of your trouble? I bet if you just hang in there, if you just hold on, uh, that you know that everything is going to be all right. Sometimes I've learned that trouble is just a test. Every now and then, uh, God will put you through a test. Uh, some of you are too young to remember, but I remember a uh, time we will look at television and every so often uh, this high pitched sound would come on and the person would say this is only a test uh, come on tap your neighbor tell him it's only a test uh, and we say this is a test this is a test of the emergency broadcast system if this were an actual emergency you would have been told to tune into another channel uh, and I come to tell you this morning that whatever you go and do it is only a test. God is going to bring you out. I, I wish you'd tap your neighbor and tell him, neighbor, God is going to bring you out. God is going to deliver you. It makes no difference difference uh, what the test is, what the trial is, what the tribulation is. God has the power to uh, deliver you. And not only can he deliver you, but how many know that God can turn your situation around uh, and give you a happy ending. That, that you may be crying right now, but how many know that God knows how to ring your joy bell? God knows how to wipe all of the tears from your eyes and there's going to be a happy ending. I, I, we talked about how we were taught to read stories and how uh, when we were taught to read those stories uh, that you have to read the whole story. You just don't read part of the story. You don't read half of the story but you read uh, the whole story and we talked about uh, the fact that there were some stories that we were raised on. We, we talked about Snow White. You remember we talked about Snow White and we talked about uh, the three pigs and the big bad wolf and we talked about uh, Cinderella and she had uh, the stepmother and the stepsisters who really did not like her uh, but in each of the stories uh, there was a happy ending because if you stop in the middle of the story, you're going to miss the end of the story. And the reason you ought not ever give up on God, because God has not finished writing your story. Uh, come on, give your neighbor a high five and say, neighbor, God has not finished writing your story. Uh, you can't even skip chapters and you can't go to the end. You can't leave anything out. You've got to read the whole story. Because when you go through the whole story, when you get to the 
then when you get to the happy ending of the story, you'll be able to lift up your hands and open up your mouth and tell God, thank you that you brought me here. Can I get a witness here? Anybody ever been through something that you didn't quite think you were going to get out of or you didn't think you were going to make it out of that situation? But now look at you. God brought you out. God lifted you up. And God delivered you out of all of that stuff. And now when we come to church, people wonder why we act like we are. But when you know that you know, when you know that you know that you know, God has brought you from a mighty long way. You can't help yourself. You've got to open up your mouth. And you've got to give God glory for the great things that he has done. Come on, shake somebody's hand. Like you're going to shake it off. And say, neighbor, you don't know like I know what the Lord has done for me. He's brought me from a mighty, 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 mighty long way. Oh, well, we looked at all. We looked at all of those stories. But there's another story that I really do like. And it's the little, it's the story of the little engine that could. Uh, some of y'all know that story. Uh, there was this hill and the engine tried to get over the hill. And there were some larger engines that were asked to take the train over the hill. Uh, but they declined. Uh, they said, no, that's too much for us to carry. But uh, well, then somebody asked the little engine. Uh, and the little engine said, I'll do it. Uh, come on, tap your neighbor. Uh, and say, neighbor, uh, whatever God tells me to do, uh, I'll do it. Uh, if it means it means I need to climb over a hill, uh, I'm going to do it. Uh, and the engine started up that hill and as he got to the top of the hill he started to slow down but then he began to talk to himself and he began to say I think I can I think I can oh come on y'all I turn to your neighbor and say neighbor I'm going up a hill right now but I think I can I think I can I'm going gonna make it uh, over that hill uh, and as the story goes uh, that little engine uh, made it over the hill uh, because every now and then uh, you've got to talk to yourself uh, and no matter what you're going through uh, you've got to say to yourself uh, I can do uh, all things uh, through Christ uh, who strengthens me uh, as long as God is on my side, I know that I can make it. As long as I know that my God is able to give me the power to make it over the hill, I believe that everything is going to be all right. Come on, tap your neighbor and say, neighbor, you're going to make it. You've got to talk to yourself. Come on, I don't see y'all talking to nobody. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I think I can. I think I can. The road's been rough and the going's been tough, but I think I can. And I believe I'm going to make it because we've been made endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Give your neighbor a high five and say neighbor I feel like my morning is on the way because my Bible says so 
as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So you've got to think good thoughts. And you've got to know that God is still able to carry you through. You've got to think positive about the God we serve. What can I tell you about a little song that some of us were raised with a long time ago by Marvin Gaye. And the song goes something like, I ain't got time to think about money or what it can buy. And I ain't got time to sit down and wonder what makes the birdie fly. And I don't have time to think about what makes the flower grow. And I've never given a second thought to where the river flow because I'm too busy thinking about not my baby but Jesus. Too busy thinking about my Jesus and I ain't got time for nothing else. Come on, shake somebody's head and tell them I've got Jesus on my mind. I know the young folk can't get with that. I look, can I go to the second verse? I said, I ain't got time to discuss the weather or how long it's going to last. And I ain't got time to do no studies once I get out of class. Telling you I'm just a fella with a one-track mind. And when it comes to thinking about anything but my Jesus, I just don't have the time. Come on, shake somebody's head like you're going to shake it off. And say, neighbor, I've got Jesus on my mind. And as long as Jesus is the author and the finisher of my faith, I know that everything going to be all right. Lord, thank you today. I told you last time that your life is like chapters. And when one chapter ends, God begins a new one. Oh, come on now. And you've got to understand that no matter what chapter you're in, the God we serve, he can write you a new chapter. Now I looked at it and I found out there's something called poetic license. And poetic license means that the author can take certain liberties to make the outcome be whatever he wants it to be. So when it comes to your life, no matter what your life has been up to this point, the God we serve can write your chapter and make you more than a conqueror. Oh God, thank you today. Come on, shake somebody's hand like you're going to shake it off and say, neighbor, I'm, jumping, I'm getting ready to begin a brand new chapter. What the devil did to me in the last chapter, God is getting ready to turn it around. God is getting ready to write another chapter in my life. I was down the last chapter, but in this chapter, I feel like God is about to raise me back up. I was depressed in the last chapter, but this is a brand new chapter, and my God is able to write me a brand new chapter. Come on, shake your neighbor's hand like you're going to shake it off and say, neighbor, I'm thanking God. Oh, if somebody sitting next to you won't talk to you, find you another neighbor. You need a neighbor that's hungry today. You need a neighbor that needs a breakthrough today. Find that neighbor and say, neighbor, 
Uh, oh, neighbor, uh, in the last chapter, uh, the devil thought he had me. Uh, but this chapter, uh, I know that I'm going uh, to make it through. Uh, I'm going to make it over. I was sick in the last chapter. But in this next chapter, I'm going to be well. I was broke in the last chapter. But in the next chapter, I believe that money cometh. Come on, y'all. Shake your neighbor's hand like you're going to shake it off and say, neighbor, the devil is a liar. He's already defeated. I believe that victory is going to be mine. Already mine. I believe that my God, he's able to bring me through. Well, the Lord laid on my heart a couple more stories. And then I'm going to take my seat. Well, the first story was about Muhammad Ali uh, when he went to fight George Foreman. Uh, some of y'all remember that. Uh, George Foreman, uh, he was big bad George. Uh, he was knocking out everybody. Uh, I mean, that brother was strong. Uh, he, when he fought Joe Frazier, uh, y'all Google that. Uh, but when he fought Joe Frazier, uh, he hit Joe Frazier so hard, uh, he knocked him off his feet. Uh, and when we heard uh, that Muhammad Ali uh, was going to fight George Foreman, uh, I was nervous. Uh, I said, that brother can't beat him. Uh, he's younger than him. Uh, he's stronger than him. Uh, he can't beat George Foreman. Uh, but when the fight took place, uh, the rumble in the jungle, uh, Lord help me today. Uh, uh, Y'all remember uh, George Foreman was hitting Muhammad Ali with everything that he had. But Muhammad Ali wasn't going nowhere. And today, you've got to tell the devil, you've hit me with everything you got, but I'm still here praising my God. Lord, I thank you. Well, as we watch the fight, Muhammad Ali positioned himself on the ropes, and he let George Foreman keep on swinging. And we now know that Muhammad Ali called it uh, the rope of dope. Uh, and you want to tell your neighbor, uh, the devil had me on the rope. Uh, but devil, uh, I'm going to show you the rope of dope. Uh, I'm going to let you uh, keep on swinging uh, and keep on hitting me. Uh, but when it's all said and done, uh, devil, uh, victory uh, going to be mine. Uh, because I told you uh, last week, uh, I didn't come uh, to win my technical knockout. Uh, and I didn't come uh, just to make him stumble. Uh, but when I come to church, uh, I come uh, to knock the devil out. Uh, come on, shake somebody's hand uh, like you're going to shake it off. Uh, and say, neighbor, uh, with all the devil uh, has done to me. Uh, I didn't come to play church. I came to have church. I came to lift up my hands. I came to stomp my feet. I came to open up my mouth. I came to jump for joy because my God is a good God and he's worthy to be praised. If you know that you know that you know that that victory uh, shall be yours. Uh, open up your mouth. Uh, tell God thank you. Uh, open up your mouth. Uh, give God glory. Uh, he is a good God. Uh, he is a great God. Uh, and he's worthy uh, to be praised.
believe. Well, can I talk to you this morning? Well, January was the first chapter. And February was the second chapter. And March was the third chapter. And April, May, and June, they were chapters. And July was another chapter. And I come to tell you today that no matter what happened to you from January to July, August is the eighth month. And the eighth month is the month of new beginnings. Shake your neighbor's hand like you're going to shake it off. And say, neighbor, it's a new beginning. I'm starting all over. I'm starting over with a brand new leaf because my God can make everything new. Come on, y'all. Shake somebody else's hand like you're going to shake it off. And say, neighbor, oh, neighbor, today I'm starting a brand new chapter. And in this chapter, I'm going to praise my way out of my trouble. Y'all not hearing me? I'm going to praise my way. I don't care what you come to do, but I come to praise the Lord. I come to magnify his name. I come to glorify the name of the Lord because the name of the Lord is a strong power. The righteous run in and they are saved. Well, can I tell you one more story that you've got to go to the end? It's the story of Jesus. We know that Jesus, he left glory and he came to this earth. He healed the sick and he raised the dead. He opened blind eyes. Come on, didn't he do it? They crucified him on an old rugged cross. They put a crown of thorns on his head. They put nails in his hand and nails in his feet. And they put nails. They wounded him in his side. But if you stop at that part of the story, you're going to miss the best part. Come on, tell your neighbor. Don't stop there. You're going to miss the best part. They hung him high and they stretched him wide and they crucified him on an old rugged cross. They put him in a borrowed tomb. But somewhere I read early, early Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hands. And because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know who holds my future. Life is worth the living just because he lives. Come on, shake your neighbor's hand and tell your neighbor, hang in there. Hold on. Help is on the way. Come on, y'all. Get you a neighbor and say, come on, neighbor. Help me praise God. Help me magnify God. Help me glorify God. Open up your mouth. Put your hands together and tell God thank you. Thank you because you're coming out. Thank him because deliverance is already yours. Come on and praise the name of the Lord. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy to be praised. Come on, hug three people. Tell them it's a brand new chapter. It's a brand new chapter.
It's a brand new chapter. Come on, come on, come on. Hug three more people. See? See, look. I can understand. It's a brand new chapter. Come on, we ain't finished yet. Come on. Come on, hug three more people. Tell me it's a brand new chapter, I'm telling you. It's a new chapter. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. It's a brand new chapter. It's, it's a new chapter for you. Now, now, I know we had this altar call, but we're going to have it again. We're going to have it again. If you believe God is writing a brand new chapter for you, I want you to run to this altar right now. Come on, you need some circumstances.